Hey folks, how's it going? This is Bill back with the uh, Hangar Rats and we're uh, back on the 0360 build. And today we got our parts back. We're going to slap this motor together. Uh, actually, nope, actually we're going to do paperwork today because everybody loves paperwork. And we're back. Okay, so today what we're going to do is, before we do anything on any engine, aircraft engine, or actually any other engine for that matter, uh, we want to make sure we have all the information for doing the work that we're going to be doing. In the aviation uh, vernacular or language, uh, in, the, in the modern language, we call that the instructions for a continued airworthiness. So before we overhaul this engine, now this engine is going to be full FA spec overhaul. So it's going into an experimental aircraft, but... We're overhauling two FA standards, all the latest bulletins, airworthiness directives, and all of that. If you have an experimental engine, and it's a big bit of a, a mix-up of uh, parts and all that, while it may be safe, <clears throat> it may not conform to an FA-type design. So uh, regardless, you want to do the right thing when it comes to your machine work and all that, so uh, and assembly, etc. So what we're doing here is we're going to go through what it takes for a Lycoming to do it right, the paperwork to go through and make sure that you have the right information that you need to overhaul your engine. Okay, this is what we do. Now, for an, uh, if you're doing one engine, or this is your first engine, uh, I did this one cold, just make kind of, uh, instead of using prior files that I had, I did this one cold to go through all of the paperwork that we need to, to get ready, to get ready to overhaul this engine. It was about eight hours. Okay, so before anything goes on, about eight hours. Now, we have our parts, they've been to the machine shop, they're back. We have our assembly parts and all that. Next episode, we're going to be doing measuring and, and things of that nature. We can't do that until we um, know what documents to use as a reference. Um, after that, we're going to, then we'll get into assembly and all of that. We have painted some parts. We'll probably talk about that on the next episode with the measuring. But right now, what we're going to do is we're going to focus on the documents that you need to make sure you have in your hip pocket before you start any kind of overhaul. This is uh, our little engine here is an 0360 Lycoming 0360 A4K. So everything's going to be focused on that engine. Now, if you have any other version of it or any other manufacturer's difference, it's going to have its own unique kind of stuff. So just uh, this is what we, we're doing on this 0360. So just to give you a heads up. Okay, and it's hot as heck. It's only going to be about 100 degrees Fahrenheit here today, so I'm sweating. Okay, <clears throat> number one. Number one document we're going to be looking at is, uh, and this is for Lycoming, is we, we have to know what documents are good. Now, whether it's Lycoming or Continental, they have the uh, current list of effective uh, publications or, you know, what publications are still good and legit or the latest versions of it. In Lycoming, it's the uh, L... 114, uh, it's up to revision BH. So you can see it it, uh, it has been revised a zillion times. It will be revised a zillion times every time a new document comes in, a new engine comes out, they have to have a manual and all that. So we're gonna be using this as our guidance, the uh, L114 document for Lycoming. It's a service letter, uh, information letter. So what we're gonna do on our aircraft, we're, we're gonna look up the O360 A4K. So on the O360 A4K, what they call out on uh, this is they call out for the parts manual. Now we need the parts manual, uh, real important, we need the parts manual to make sure we have the right parts. Kind of makes sense, right? But also as part of this build, this is gonna be an FA build, we wanna make sure that the aircraft or part of the engine conforms to the type design. Now this is not, the parts manual is not an approved manual, but it's the only thing we have. So we're gonna use that uh, as our guidance. So. Right now we look in the 114 document and it says, okay, the parts manual you need to have for an A4K engine is a PC 306-1, which we have, and they say it needs to be revised up to the dash 1B November 81 uh, version. We look at this, the 306-1B uh, document or the revision page of it, and you can see it's a 306-1B um, revised up with the latest stuff and all that. So um, we have, we now know that our parts catalog that we're gonna be using is the latest greatest, okay, real important. Um, now, to Lycoming's defense, not in the old days, 
they have broken out the different models. It used to be on the 320 and 360, 540 families, they would, new model come out, they just add an addenda, and then you had to go, it was a, it was a bit of a pig's breakfast with regards to trying to figure out what you had, going into different addenda in the back of the manuals and all that. They have broken those out, and I gotta give them credit, it's really nice. So now instead of having one parts manual for an 0320, there's numerous parts manuals for the different families and models and all that. So they've done a really good job. All of that information is on like Cummings website, Title and Continental also has that information too. And again, that 114 document is going to help us out there. So that's the parts manual. It's the, on for our particular engines, PC306-1. Good. Now we know what parts are supposed to be in that engine. Also helps us on reorder parts and all that. So that really helps out. <clears throat> we also look over and next to it, it has installation and operation manual. That's great for an owner. And then we also have the overhaul manual. Overhaul manual, they call that a 60294-7 and up to revision 14. So that's what we're looking at, okay, July 2011. So here we have the direct drive overhaul manual and this pretty much covers all um, direct drive engines. So 0320, 0235s, 0290s, 0320s, 360s, 540s, 720s. This is pretty much the entire family for direct drive. So direct drive, geared engines is another manual. So this is gonna be the overhaul manual. As a result, this is kind of a generic document. So there's gonna be a lot of things in here that we will probably or possibly discard. Chapters that talk about the eight cylinder engine, we're not gonna worry about that. Chapters that talk about fuel injection for this engine, not gonna talk about that. Um, turbocharging, that we don't care about that on this engine. So there's, being a generic document, there's gonna be some issues there. Now we go in here and look at it, and most importantly, what we're looking for, we were wanting to make sure that we had the revision 14, and we look up here in the top of the page, revision 14, okay? If you have revision 13, you do not have the latest instructions, so you need to do that, okay? You're, you're putting together, you figure it just a simple four cylinder, anywhere from 10 to $20,000, go spend the money to get the proper manuals, okay? Most of this stuff, except for the direct drive manual, I believe, is all available on the Lycoming website. So there you go. So now we know that we're using the latest, greatest, as of today manual, revision 14. So we've got the information we need. Now, when you get this manual, <clears throat> attached to the back of it, or the second half, if you want to call it, is going to be a service document called the SSP 1776-5, um, and that document is, um, that document is for the service table of limits, all of our dimensions, all of that information there, okay? This is a living document. This changes quite often. So whether it's corrections or additions or whatever, so you need to make sure you have the latest one here. Now, I, I bought this particular direct drive manual uh, so a couple, three years ago, this has since been updated, numerous revisions. So we want to make sure we can, we have the latest. And this, for Lycoming, it's the SSP 1776-5, available on their website for download. So this is cool. This is free. So you, there's no reason why you can't have the latest information. Okay, the SSP 1776. So that's real important. So now we know how to overhaul the engine. We know what to measure the engine to and all that. We know what parts go into the engine. That's cool. So now this is the, uh, the next thing we wanna look at is the SSP 112-11 index. And this is the index of service bulletins, letters, and instructions. So there's three basic documents that the manufacturer puts out in addition to operating manuals, parts manuals, and things like that. One is a service letter, the other is a service instruction, and the third is a service bulletin. We'll talk about the service bulletin first. The service bulletin is a document to fix stuff. Okay, I'll, I'll try to boil it down. And if you guys have anything you wanna jump on me, great. Comments below, actually comments, hit that like button, it, it really helps out. But more comments, the better. I don't know everything, I'll be the first to admit it, but I'm gonna try to boil it down in simple language. The service bulletins fix things. You have a bad thing, the service bulletin comes out and says that part is either unairworthy or it has been replaced and you need to put this new thing in there. Okay, piston pins, cylinders, crankshafts, who knows what. You've seen them referred to years through the years. 
When an airworthiness directive comes out, oftentimes the FAA will refer to a service bulletin. Okay, the manufacturers, I'm sweating here. Manufacturers are, um, they've already done the, the homework and they know what the parts are and that's, that's why the FAA refers to that um, with the airworthiness directive. Because the airworthiness directive, while it is, it is very important and it is reasonably timely, it is kind of Johnny come lately. <clears throat> so the manufacturer already knows the problem. They've got the parts in place and all that. So that's what the service bulletin does. It fix, excuse me, it fixes things, okay? The service letter is a document that kind of says, hey, we got a new widget. If you want to, if you're, if you're aware, we have a new widget. And if you want to, you can buy this widget instead of that widget. So we have a new widget. Nothing, nothing you got to do, but it's a new widget. Okay, so, and it's, it's kind of a, service letter is kind of a, eh, almost sort of marketing sales. But it is notifying the maintenance folks that, hey, there's a new item out here you might want to look at or a new option for your engine or possibly an added feature, whatever, or service kits, things like that. So you've got service bulletins, service um, letters, and then we have service instructions. Service instruction typically is, that tells you, as the title is, it tells you how to do something. So um, the service letter comes out and says, hey, we have a new kit see service instruction this and then and the service instruction are the instructions on how to do something you remove these pistons put these pistons in you remove these cylinders put these cylinders in we have a new oil pump remove this oil pump put that in so it's it is exactly what it says it's an instruction document how to do something so that's what we're going to find out in the service bulletin letters and instructions document all of those documents the ones we care about for our build for the maintenance part of it, the only ones I care about are the service bulletins. Anytime there's a service bulletin, we want to incorporate those because those say this is a bad part, put this good part in. We're going to incorporate the service bulletins at overhaul. That's what repair stations do. That's what the manufacturers do. They incorporate all of those parts at overhaul. So that's really very important for us. So the SSP for Lycoming, the SSP 112-11 is that document. So. What do you do? You figure, well, there's a couple bulletins. Now, the, the way, the way um, <clears throat> let's see if I've got my sheet here. Nope. The way Lycoming does it is they break it out by engine, model, family. So they will give you a listing of the service bulletins for the, o, for, in our case, the O360 family, which that's everything from an O360A to an O360Z, everything from a carbureted engine to an injected engine to a turbocharged engine. So... Um, now we've got, um, we went, we, what I did is I went through that listing and there's about 160, about 160 service bulletins total. So I've gone through and I determined which ones actually apply or can be applied at overhaul. Of the 160, of those 160, uh, let's see, I got a little tally here, a little over 160. Uh, there's four that apply to the magnetos. Now the magnetos, we've, we've, um, inspected those and all that and they are um, they've been addressed so there's four service bolts so boom done um, there's two that apply to the carburetor that's on our engine those are actually those service bulletins are about 20 or 30 years old um, we just had our carburetor overhauled those service bolts done okay so now we ha we thought we had about 11 that we we're going to have to address we have five that actually pertain to the engine and the ones that do pertain to the engine um, we're going to do anyway. I've got one bulletin I've got to get with like combing on. It's kind of a mystery bulletin. Not sure which that one is. It's a very old one. I just need to get it from my files. Um, we've got some for uh, sudden stoppage uh, inspection, which was done at overhaul. A couple of those. Uh, check on the oil by bypass valve. That we'll do at overhaul. Um, so there's really not that many that we have to address. And the reason is there's quite a few bulletins with regards to um, replacing piston pins. We're, we're putting new piston pins in. Um, there's some uh, with bad, the big mud dauber flying around. Uh, there's, there's problems with um, bad cylinders, PMA cylinders. We're put going with all new cylinders. Um, crankcase, uh, or pardon me, uh, crankshaft uh, machine shop issues on other machine shops. That's been taken care of. So a lot of these bulletins fall out. Uh, of those 160, there's a ton on injected engines. Ours is not injected. There's a ton on turbochargers. Ours is not a turbocharger. Um, injected that. There's a ton on Bendix magnetos. Um, we, and also the Bendix single and dual magnetos. We have 
the slick unison champion magneto so most of those fall out so we don't that's why we only had about four or five uh slick when i have four four slick uh bulletins and we've already dressed those so we're, we're in great shape that way so that's that's the company side of it the service bulletin so we're going to make sure that we comply with those and we're going to list all those out that'll be part of our the reason we're doing this up front I gotta come back. The reason we're doing this up front is this is only gonna help us when it comes time to do our logbook entry. Now, if I'm a repair station, I've done so many of these engines that this effort is actually very, very easy. The quality manager will basically just be picking up the latest revisions and they're gonna be, it's as part of their repair schemes and their in-house processes, this is all gonna be already inbred, written into their process. So, so it's already, uh, again, with the big repair stations, it's already part of their scheme. They've been doing it. That's what they do. So it's not as Herculean an effort as it is for, say, an individual doing one engine. So, but it's a great exercise. If you want to see what the pain is, this is a great way to see it. But the other thing, too, is it gets you more uh, in touch with your engine and the different things going on, more familiarity. And that's all great, excuse me, great stuff. Um, so that's, so you figure, well, that's it. We got the, we've got the right manual. We've got the parts manual, the maintenance manual. We've got the table of limits. We got the service bulletins. We're done. <clears throat> we're absolutely done. Not so fast. Airworthiness directives. Okay, so now we've got airworthiness directives. And what, what I did is I went and did a preliminary poll on my uh, on airworthiness directives. I use T data. That's what I use. You can use it. whatever you guys want to use. This is what I use. I use T data. I just did a preliminary. Uh, wrote wrote some stuff down on this one so I can. <clears throat> I'll do a printout. Uh, with it all blank and then I'll fill it in by hand and then go back and type it in. Uh, it's just a lot quicker for me. So I've come through all of these and, all, and whatnot. And uh, then what I've done is I've taken all the airworthiness directives for the 360 series engines. That's kind of the way even the database folks break it out. And then I've put them, uh, put it on a little spreadsheet here. And you can see what it boils down to for me, for me anyway, <clears throat> is... Um, these yellow bars here, that's actually one air on this directive that I will have to comply with. And that has to do with the uh, crankshaft gear retaining bolt, which has already been accomplished uh, partially by the machine shop. So this is, um, this is kind of what I do. I run through uh, when I'm doing this is does it apply? And then how did I, especially on the air on this directives, how did I comply with it? So there's a lot of things on attaching brackets that uh, fuel injection, again, the same kind of things. On these here, uh, these particular ones, as far as the airworthiness directives, most, I believe most all, except for a couple old ones, refer to a service bulletin. So boom, you did the service bulletin search, so your homework is kind of three quarters done on this, and then what I do is I just tick and tie them both. When I do my write-ups, I will refer to the, uh, that I complied with the various airworthiness directives in my logbook entry, if there's anything uh, in excess to that as far as service bulletins, then I will list those service, those other service bulletins separately. If an airworthiness directive uh, incorporates a service bulletin, there's no re reason to say that you complied with it by AD and service bulletin. It's just redundant. So um, again, read your airworthiness directives and that kind of stuff. So that's kind of what I go through. Um, this stuff can't be touched until this stuff is finished so most importantly so now I know what manuals I have I know what I can measure my items to and all of that and let's talk about that too we'll come back kind of full circle on that so now we talked about um, the overall manual we talked about the parts manual we talked about the service bulletins um, we talked about um, all of the uh, airworthiness directives and all that so now we're gonna go I'm just gonna do a quick one on this we're gonna talk about the um, the SSP 1776, the service table limits and, and whatnot. <clears throat> so, so now we're going to go through this. We'll go through this now, and I'm just going to show you kind of how to read this thing. It's it's a little complicated, but it's kind of simple. So we we'll go through this. Um, boom, boom, boom. Blah, 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 blah. Like I said, let's go through here. They talk about all sorts of things. The important thing on this is uh, when we get into figuring out what our codes are on the various sundry tables. So when we look at this, 
this is on uh, page, I don't know, four or five, something like that, on this document here. And it lists all the different engines that this document applies to. You can see it starts at 0235s, uh, 320s, 0235s, 290s, 320s, 360s, uh, all the way up to 720s. So uh, including the 390s for you folks who are running 390s. Man, I'm still sweating here. Okay, so now we have to, we've got to figure out what model, what is our code? Nah, I'm sweating here, I'm damping off. It's just 100 degrees and it's nine o'clock in the morning. Um, so what we're gonna do is figure out what code, you see, uh, see on here it says chart. We're gonna look for the proper identifier for our, our O360A4K. So now we go through here and we can see here all the different models, 340OLO360E series, okay? We're not gonna, that's not us. V, VO, IVO 360, that's not us. O, IO, LIO, HIO, LHIO, TO, TIO, AEIO 360, that's us. So we're gonna, we're gonna look at that code S. Now the way they write this is they say, hey, if you have any other supplementary codes, you can see here S1234, if you have those, that is separate from this original S code. So now we look at the next one. Is it is our engine a TIO a TO360? No. Is our engine an AIO360? No. So S2 is out. Is it a TIO360? S3. Nope, it's out. Is it an oh, O360A with a governor at the front. No, it is not. Um, it is has the governor at the back. S5, IO, LIO, 360A, angle valve. Nope, it's a parallel valve, so S5 is out. Is it an IO, LIO, 360A with governor at front? No, it is not. It is an O with a governor at the back. Go over here. Is it an HIO, 360? Nope, it's not a helicopter engine. Is it HIO, 360B? Nope, it is not one of those. Is it an HIO 360C? Nope, it is not one of those. S9 is gone. Is it an HIO 360A? No, it is not an HIO. It is not an HIO 390. Okay, so as far, it is not a 390. This is all in the S family. Is it an HIO 360? Nope, it's not one of those. S12 is gone. S13, gone. HIO 3, S14. So what we're looking for when we go to our codes for our various dimensions, we're looking for code S. Code S or all, okay? So now we get into the document itself. There's lots of, lots of reading here you guys can ro go through. Um, shows the various uh, revision stuff. And let's just go into page one, okay? This just, we'll grab page one. So now we're looking here as to what dimensions we need to worry about, okay? So we look here on the chart and we see that um, for the main bearings and crankshaft, there's code S, okay? We're gonna worry about that one. We don't worry about code A, we don't worry about code A. Here we go, main bearing journal on crankshaft, there's another code S. So what you can do is go through your document, okay? S1, 11, 12, T1, nope, that's not us. S8, nope, not us. S1, nope, not us. So as far as reference 500, um, these are the two we need. Now we keep on going, it's still reference 500. A, B, 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 nope, nope, there's an S right there. So we're gonna care about that one. That's crankcase bearing bore diameter. Um, see this one? Nope, nope, no S there. Up oh, here's an S there. Okay, so for 500, you can see 500, there's four dimension points that we need to be concerned about. So that's it. All this other stuff goes away. So now this document, which is about 40 pages long, you can see once you get it cleaned up with exactly what you have and what you uh, are going to uh, be measuring, uh, there's most of this document you're not is not going to be applicable to your particular engine so you're going to have to go through that and identify that stuff so that's what you need to do on the table of limits once you figure that out now you can put that on a nice little uh, spreadsheet if you want to do something like that of the exact of the exact dimensions that you really need to measure and that kind of stuff which dimensions do we measure well in our case we're going to measure everything everything we can get to within reason we're buying new cylinders the cylinders are going to be all assembled uh, we're not going to measure those because they're all PMA parts. They're brand new. We're not going to measure those cylinders. We're not going to take the valves apart and measure all that. On that one, we're going to have the 8130 tag and we're going to go with, with good parts there. Everything else, all these machine parts, again, this is aviation. It involves humans. Humans make mistakes. And even the repair stations will tell you um, everybody needs to check this stuff out. You, the returning, the mechanic, or the owner, whoever is doing this engine, you're returning it to service, it's on you. It's all on you. So we're gonna measure everything that the machine shop did to double check. 
well, the machine shops and repair stations never make mistakes. Yeah, they do. And I've sent stuff back and they're like, hey, that's a miss. That's so. Does it happen often? No. Very, 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 very seldom. I've only been doing this for 40 years, twice. So, but it was, how did I catch it? We caught it by measuring stuff. And we said, hey, this is, this is messed up. They said, oh yeah, that, that slipped through our system. So double check, double check, double check, triple check, quadruple check, whatever. So we're gonna check all these parts and we're, that'll be, uh, we'll show that on the next episode as we're going through how we're measuring and the different tools we're gonna be doing. So right now, you got some book work to do. So before you touch that engine, as far as putting it together, this is the great best time for this is once you've sent your parts out to the machine shop to have that work done, now that's a great time. You're gonna have a little bit of a slack period for a month or two possibly. Get into your paperwork and get all your paperwork sorted, put it all in a binder, get it in one place. And you know what? I make a shop copy. If it gets oily, it gets greasy, it doesn't matter. It's gonna get thrown out. But, um, so don't, don't, don't cry if it's not, uh, it's not pretty. Um, and then same thing with the, uh, my table of limits. I'm gonna have a, a set that I'll be writing on and I'll transfer that to the nice pretty record set. So that's the documents for today, okay? Paperwork, nobody likes paperwork, but that's gonna keep you safe. It's gonna make sure you build a good engine. So that's it, Hanger Rats out. Have a great one. Most importantly, uh, hit that like, subscribe button, uh, throw some comments, anything would be great. We really appreciate it. Um, and hopefully we'll see you guys up at Oshkosh. So we'll be wandering around there somewhere. So you guys have a good one, I'm out. <music>